Welcome back to what it's really like to be an entrepreneur. I'm Vincent Lancy, speaker and author of the book Left for Dead, A Story of Redemption. Want to know what it's really like to be an entrepreneur? Well, you came to the right place. Whether you're already an entrepreneur or you're looking to start your journey tomorrow, or maybe just someone who needs a little extra motivation to get through the day, this is the perfect podcast for you. This is the place where you will learn exactly what it's like in the world of entrepreneurship and hear real life, authentic stories of entrepreneurs grinding on each episode. My goal for this podcast is to help you realize that giving up is never an option. If you missed last week's episode, be sure to download it after you tune in today. My guest on the show this week is someone who I've known for almost 15 years. We both went to Northport High School and then the University of Tampa. I stayed with her on my visit to UT during my senior year of high school and have remained friends since. Thanks for letting me crash, and thanks for joining my podcast, Fran. It's good to see you. Thank you for having me, and uh, good times. Yeah, for <laughs> sure. I'm excited to have Fran on today. You're going to learn a lot from her and her businesses and her stories from her journey. So, Fran, why don't you share your story, where you're from, what you're doing today, and what's going on? Well, I am currently based out of South Florida, but I'm a bit of a nomad at the moment. I have actually used my degree from the University of Tampa, believe it or not. I'm a photographer. I studied comm. I was a communications major. Always wanted to be in the creative field, touched corporate world, touched the non-corporate world, decided to go off on my own. But it was a very interesting evolution. But now I'm very happy where I've landed and I'm kind of just enjoying this wild ride and taking the nomadic lifestyle to another level this year. And I, I'm able to do that with, um, with my photography. So thanks for having me. Of course. Why don't you explain to our listeners a little more about your nomadic journey over the last year? Okay. Um, my husband and I bought a house four years ago, which is probably more like five now. And at the time I was toying with the idea of quitting my job as a marketing director for a boutique hotel, which sounds great. And it was an awesome job. Um, loved doing that, but I was also working for like the old boys club mm -hmm. and I was hitting walls and they didn't really care about Facebook marketing or, you know, I was just the in-house photog and all I did was take pictures. So I was like, you know, I could do this on my own. I'm making great connections. I love hospitality, but like there's something bigger. Yeah. Um, and so when we bought our house, we got faced with some adversity with, you know, home ownership and a fixer upper. And during that time, my, um, my husband now, GA, Gordon, you know him. Of course. He took to Plant Park for the first time. But his dad got sick, actually, was diagnosed with stage four cancer. And so, like, our whole world kind of just, like, came tumbling down. And we were so excited to buy this house and these renovations. And then all of a sudden, his dad passed away. And we just, like, you know, were faced with this crazy hardship and um I quit my job I was like I life's too short like let's go figure out how to do this on our own and yeah. since then we have figured it out in so many ways but it's been a process and now we're um so now back to the house yeah we sold it and with that money we decided to renovate a vintage Airstream and just travel because we love our dog and we love to travel but it's hard to leave him all the time and we just yeah, felt like yeah. it was a great opportunity and timing and it's not original people do it all over Instagram there's a huge community and so we just said we're not doing this for the gram we're doing it because we can so let's do yeah. it and we went cross country for six months up to New York saw a bunch of friends and family down you know through Maine Oregon California Colorado and we're back in Florida because I got some business here so taking yeah, care of, of that and then we're going to go back out on the road for another uh four to six months so We'll see what happens. Well, I've really enjoyed watching your pictures online. At the end of this episode, we'll share your social media and your website so our, our listeners can li listen and watch in too. Thanks. Yeah, so that's a great story. Thanks for sharing. So now, Fran, what I do each week is I share an entrepreneurial story that is sure to inspire our listeners. This week, let's look at Sarah Blakely. She is the founder of the undergarment company, Spanx. Sarah Blakely had little money left when she was founding Spanx. She was also turned down from potential investors time and time again. This made it extremely difficult for her to get her company off the ground, and the easy choice would have been just to give up. To portray the validity of that statement, where it only takes one, during the beginning rounds of her marketing efforts, Oprah Winfrey was that one, where she complimented Spanx, and it drove sales up for awareness in the company. She even made a guest appearance on the hit show, Shark Tank. At one point, she was a door-to-door -door fax machine salesperson, and now 
This multi-million dollar company is sold in around 65 countries around the world and is also the co-owner of the Atlanta Hawks basketball team. That's a boss. Yeah. It's crazy. And she's from Clearwater, too. Is she? Yeah, fun fact. Yeah, Florida girl. Back near Tampa, Florida. for those of you not familiar with Florida. But now, friend, we're going to get into the big five. This is my favorite part of each episode because not only do I learn more about you, my guests, but the listeners can learn all about your journey. So for the big five, let's get into it. Question one, when did you realize that you weren't happy with what you were doing or maybe you just simply needed a change? Um, my epiphany happened in 2014. My sister um, got married and I was very involved with the wedding planning. I helped pick vendors, you know, decor, all the things. I was basically like her wedding planner. And I fell in love with that industry, but I was also really intimidated by it because it's so it's so saturated and I know so many talented and respected photographer. So even though I was shooting and doing a lot of that creative work, I didn't feel like I fit into that category. So I knew I wanted to do something in the wedding industry. So I started like a style event business, but I wanted to do photography on the side. I was trying to do so much, yeah. um, you know, like I'm one of those, like, wearing all the different hats like I actually just helped plan and shoot a wedding last weekend and I was like wow did it never again but anyway <laughs> back in 2014 I was just toying with the idea of going out on my own and then um, being in marketing and just feeling like I was at a dead-end job I was super unfulfilled I didn't feel like I was growing and it was too comfortable so when life really happened was I, I told you earlier my yeah. my husband's father was diagnosed with cancer and died within six months and it just kind of put our whole world into perspective about how life is short and nothing is promised and if you have these goals and these dreams like what are you waiting for so he was able to support it. me yeah. yeah like he was in school too my um GA was getting his doctorate in physical therapy and oh, then wow. when he, yeah and when his dad was sick he was back like in the hospitals working and going to school and grinding and commuting to Davie and he was miserable he was working for four or five years to get in and I was just trying to be supportive and help him, you know, follow this dream. And he ended up quitting school by choice. And I thought that was the most um, admirable thing that somebody could do was to choose to say, you know, what? this isn't for me. So both of us kind of took a complete pivot and we started just kind of living a more simple life and realizing it's not about climbing that corporate ladder or saying I'm a doctor, you know, you can do something that is on a smaller scale that helps people without being in a, in the medical field. And I've always loved the idea of working together and now we are. So it's really cool that he's oh. kind of supported me throughout the years getting off the ground. And now that I've found my way into the wedding industry, which is sort of the journey I got inspired by my sister's wedding and then our wedding photographer, who I'm going to plug yeah. right now, um, yeah. Josh Payne. He's an amazing artist. He's a destination wedding photographer. We were friends before I hired him. And he pulled me in to shoot weddings with him after I got married. So we actually awesome. did an elopement in Italy together last year. And he was just the one that said, you've been denying this wedding photography thing for four years. Like, it's happening. <laughs> and I got the itch. And now I have GA shooting with me, too. So it's been fun. Sounds like an awesome entrepreneurial story. There's definitely a lot of value in there. That's awesome. Thanks. Follow and it's your dreams. circle too. Like I think that's what um, I like the most about my story is that it kind of it evolves and it it always comes back. You know, like you you oh, come yeah. back to whether it was a person you met or a place that you experienced. Like I'm a very sentimental person and I kind of like to lead with my heart. So I'm, I'm always finding like the little meanings, but I feel like that's what life is all about. You have to appreciate that stuff to, you know, see the bigger picture. I love so. it. I love it. Question two talked about a little, a little bit, but what are one or two of the most difficult parts of being an entrepreneur you can share with our listeners? So I'm going to motivate them through these tough times that they're probably going to experience as well. Yeah, so I am a little bit ADD. I have I'm like your your Windows browser or Safari with like all the tabs open at all times. <laughs> so like prioritizing is such a struggle. Even when I worked for corporate, like I needed people to give me tasks and assignments and deadlines. Like I need to know when these things have to get done, otherwise they kind of just float. So I put a lot of pressure on myself with that because as an entrepreneur, there's always so much to be done whether it's all day there's something to do 
client relationships, social media, marketing, like, you know, getting new people to come in and see you and staying relevant and just the everyday. It's so hard for me to prioritize and then between shooting and editing and delivering and, um, you know, helping friends babysit and knowing that you have a flexible schedule. And then my second thing is separating because my personal and professional life are so intertwined. Yeah. I, I to limit myself from, um, you know, screen time when six o'clock rolls around, it's dinner time. We get ready to watch Jeopardy at Wheel of Fortune. It's my guilty pleasure. <laughs> I will be on Wheel of Fortune. That is on my bucket list, just so you know. Um, like no screen time, but if GA falls asleep and I'm just sitting there, like I feel like I need to be doing something. I need to be editing. I can't just like, if I'm watching something on TV, I'm usually completely somewhere else. So I struggle. I don't think there's any such thing as a work-life balance. And yeah. I think that's okay. Like people just need to embrace that. And just, you know, you have to learn when there's a time for work and there's a time for play and there's a time to just like do nothing. Cause I have those days where I literally just close all the blinds and hide. <laughs> and it's so beautiful. Like I live in yeah. Florida and I, you, I will not be at the beach. I will be in the air conditioning just without any sort of sensory, you know? I love it. Yeah, I'm an indoor person as well, especially when it's hot down there. Oh, yeah. And then self-care, obviously, you got to take care of yourself. You know, you got to get your yoga in. Like, my yoga sensi is always, like, asking where my husband where I am. And it's because I'm, like, editing, and I really should be at yoga. So I struggle, but, you know, we find the time when we can. I'm guilty of the same thing, always feeling like I need to work on something because something new is going to pop up. But perfect. Oh. Yeah. And you get these light bulbs at the most random times and, you know, shower thoughts are real. Like I wish I had a chalkboard in my shower or something. Oh, right? shower board. Yeah. Like all these random thoughts you get when you're in the shower and epiphanies. Ugh, I agree. Start. That happens to me when I exercise, but let's move to number three. What all is right. one of your greatest failures and what did it teach you? I honestly believe I haven't had a major failure just because everything that's ever happened, whether it's like my camera settings just completely like blacking out and not changing my settings during a shoot or, you know, expectations or contracts, like I learn as I go and you don't know what you don't know. So I always just value every shoot, every experience is different. And I take so much from each day and client and um, I... I channel that into something positive versus feeling like I failed. I think it's always a win, you know, because I'm the only person hold account being held accountable. So I really try to, um, I can't blame anybody else for my problems. So it's just, you got to channel that into a reflection and move on and move forward. I love the way you put that. It's a good way. And that'll be very valuable for everybody listening in. We'll move to number four. Dead or alive, if you could choose to have a conversation, learn from one entrepreneur, someone who got things off the ground all by themselves, who would you pick? Really hard question for some reason. Um, I honestly have to say Joanna Gaines. I am just in love with her and her story. And I read their, her book with her husband. And they're such real people. And they have such an amazing worth, work ethic. Um, they built their brand out of nothing. They yeah, started a little bit for our listeners who aren't sure. Okay, so the Fixer Upper couple that are on HGTV, they have a brand called Magnolia, and it started with them just kind of flipping houses, but it was so much more than that. You know, they've had some epic fails, speaking of, and they're very candid in their book, and it's oh. such an easy read, and it makes you realize, like, you can do these things because why wouldn't you? You know, like, it's okay if you get screwed and miss out because another opportunity is going to come around and save the day. Um, that's not always the case, but they definitely live that, you know, now with the success of their companies and them yeah, they're huge, huge, huge. And they are so authentic and they have great style and they change people's lives. And I think they've taken their brand and done something really powerful and positive with it. And now that I'm starting to work with my husband, I see a very similar, um, trait with our relationship and I don't think that's normal I think that's we're really lucky that we're able to spend so much time together and work together because people think we're crazy honestly I spend so much time explaining myself what do you mean you're living in a trailer what do you mean you sold your house what do you mean yeah. you're not sick of each other like we just we're life like we love doing life and we've taken this approach where we don't feel like stuck in a box and we can just kind of float around and do our thing and that's what it's all about I love it. Yeah, some people, like we talked about before with the job title, being a doctor, some people, that's what they want, and some people want more of the flexibility, the 
I mean, it's tough to not have a paycheck every Friday. Some people me- mentally, they would freak out. You know, I was at a bank, I was at these companies earning good money. And then when I moved to more of my philanthropy related activities and uh-huh. following my passion, money will be larger at the end of the day. But in the beginning, it's just it's it's frustrating. Me- That's probably why we want to work every hour of the day, because we want to put ourselves in the position to get there. Right. right. Now that number four, I was a great answer. Where do you see yourself and your entrepreneurial endeavors in the future? We'll look at one year and five years, but let's start a little smaller. We talked about a little bit with you in one year, a little bit of your plan. How is that related to your entrepreneurial activities? Will you be taking photos on the road? Yeah, so I am booking out um, weddings and events and destinations that I've sort of targeted. Um, The Bahamas is a really special place for GA and I, he, we got married there. And since we've just had a lot of opportunities from our venue and um, being, you know, it's a small, it's this, it's actually a very big island, Eleuthera, but there's such a small community there. So we've just become super attached and we're going to start building a little house over there so we can That's spend awesome. more time and, you know, have this Florida to Bahamas sort of commute and you know, we've been doing the work and it's been coming back to us. So we're just kind of embracing this island lifestyle. We like, we did the tiny living thing. We traveled, yeah. we're not RV people, but we've enjoyed the experience. So we feel like this is our evolution. Like we sold our house with this um, intention and now we're, we're pursuing it. We've purchased land, we're working with a builder. So we're hoping by this summer, we're going to be living an island life and kind of spreading out over there, which is just a whole new animal, but we're really excited because we know we love it and it's not a far commute from Florida. So yeah, it's awesome. I really envy that. That's great. You're getting out there seeing everything. And now uh, Fran, thanks for coming on the show. I know we're going to see a lot of value in what you said today, the entrepreneurial stories of how hard you had to work, leaving the easy paycheck to follow your dreams. Well, this is time for the last word here. Is there something that you want to share with our listeners that you just didn't get to touch on today? Uh, Yeah, I feel like people need to learn to be uncomfortable. It's okay to be uncomfortable. Like we had a very cushy um, situation. We had our house paid off. We were just like living this very um, settled life where, you know, you would have kids and you would, we would have our, we would host families and holidays. And we just said, maybe this isn't what we want right now. And we're going to give this up when we don't have to. And we made that choice. And like, we made a choice to get uncomfortable. And I feel like the growth that has come in the last year to not even maybe six months has been beyond my wildest expectations from what I thought I would be doing a year ago. And I'm excited that it's going to continue because I don't have like a necessary home base and I'm a homebody I'm a cancer yeah. like or I I like to just kind of be in my shell and having the like just open-ended possibilities has been really rewarding and um it's good to get uncomfortable to, it's the only way you're going to change so just embrace the growth because this is all you have and you know that's what we're here for yeah I love it all right friend why don't you go ahead and share your social media and your website so that way our listeners can follow in on your road trip see the pictures and reach out to you for their wedding and other party needs Awesome. Yeah. I'm Coviello Photo. It's my maiden name, C-O-V-I-E-L-L-O Photo. And my website is coviellophoto.com. All right. Great, guys. So give her a follow at Coviello Photo and check out coviellophoto.com to learn more today. Please follow the show on Instagram at your favorite morning podcast and on Twitter at Podcast by Lancy. Of course, my handles are at Vincent A. Lancy on all social media and YouTube. And my website is vincentalancy.com. If you really enjoyed today's episode, please continue listening and rate What's It Really Like to Be an Entrepreneur five stars. I work really hard to find value delivering stories for you on each episode. And as always, I will end the show and the last word with a quote that inspired me and it will be sure to inspire you too. Wake up with determination, go to bed with satisfaction. If you missed last week's episode, please be sure to download it after you tune in today. Thanks for listening, and I'll see you next week on What's It Really Like to Be an Entrepreneur.